equal to the uh, insect apparition that Tom has left over. Yeah. So, so we are going to game three. This the winner of this match will be playing against Tom Ma. We have Brandon Kreptic on the on the left playing Blue White Delver versus Matt Young playing Niapod. So I think this is a matchup that probably does favor Delver. Uh, we've actually seen Niapod decks today do f actually having been pretty successful. Quick update: so, Craig, Craig Wesco defeats Niapod uh, two games to zero and will be advancing to the semifinals. I believe we will have him uh, on camera in the semifinals playing against the winner of Sharfman and Larry Park. You know, and that's a really good thing as what we saw. Um, we said this would be an excellent top eight for Craig Wesco if he can get out of the quarterfinals. Yeah, which he was able to do. He's so. done it. Um, yeah. You know, watch out. Round one loss, not to deter him at all. So, uh, yeah, Matthew Young has a, uh, let's see here. Actually, does he, where's, his deck list is just sorted out. Like <laughs> it's all weird, over. kind of a weird way here. It's so, yeah, he definitely has a committed, definitely has a committed Birthing Pod deck. I actually can't, yeah, he has three copies of Birthing Pod and then a bunch of singletons. He's going, you know, yep. up, the, up the curve to the, you know, the Worm Coil Inferno Titan Elish Nor and sort of the uh, stock fatties that you would anticipate seeing out of the dedicated Birthing Pod decks. Right, he actually is seems to be missing most of, he only has one five in his deck, just an Acidic Slime. So it's possible that his curve doesn't build all the way up very well. Uh, in this matchup, though, he oftentimes sides out his pod. Remember, he probably can't side out his pod. So he plays more like a traditional aggro deck. He has Daybreak Ranger, probably brings in extra th Thalia, uh, maybe Galvanic Blast, especially if he's on the draw. Probably Galvanic yeah, Blast. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Like, the, uh, the, the pod deck definitely has the tools to win the game if it's going late, assuming that not too much damage has done, been done early on. Right. And uh, Galvanic Blast can do a lot to stop... Uh, some of Cryptic's more explosive openings. So Brandon Cryptic playing pretty much a mirror of the same deck we just saw out of uh, out of Morgan Chang. It's Blue White Delver. It has four pieces of equipment. I, I probably after board it doesn't have a war piece. He probably is all sort of feast and famine and rune chanters pike. Yeah. It appears that Matt is taking a mulligan. Yeah, we'll uh, get that confirmed for a second, but I believe so. Um, So yeah, we are uh, one Niapod deck down. So right now it is down to Matt Young, Craig Wesco, and the Sea of Delver. Yep. One man staring into the abyss. So what do you think about uh, Matthew Young's uh, mana creatures are four birds, uh, two Avacyn's Pilgrims, and one Land War Elves? What do you think about that split? Well, um, I know that birds are the, birds are by and large far and away considered the best man. One yeah, man you, you have significant colored mana requirements once you're in three colors. So right, most people. Um, I think seven is a little low. I would like to run more. I really think one of the best parts about the uh, pod deck is its ability just to play mana creatures, strangle root geists, attacking. You know, I I, I like that aspect of the deck. Um, turn one Delver out of cryptic. Uh, but off Matt, Matt Young on six on the play. Havison's and Pilgrim and a Rootbound Crag. This so, has a Revoke Existence, which is flips the Delver, but that, that card gives uh, Matt a ton of information about how to proceed with the game, which is... Right, and the, the pod deck, he's going to have to play more like a traditional aggro deck. Uh, Matt, having kept a hand that doesn't have too much early game in it, I, he's probably going for like his mi more mid-range style cards. So Brandon having pondered here will give him a window. Matt would like to resolve something like Huntmaster would be awesome. Daybreak yeah, Ranger would be yeah. fine too. Some werewolves would be great. Yeah. Uh, Brandon does have a mana leak in his hand, um, so you know this this is probably Matt's last window to really to to, to show how he's going to try to win the game. Right. The the danger is if if Matt's initial plan to do this. So he kept a six. You know this sort of hand. If his threat's birthing pod instead, that's going to work out very poorly for him because of the revoke existence right. we've seen. Brandon keeps. You know, it's actually very rare that people shuffle off the uh, ponder. Yeah, it's actually Delver. insane. I maybe I'm just pickier than most people are, but I feel like I'm shuffling constantly. From one of the ways I heard it described is that it's not that you, any of your cards are bad, and most hands are pretty similar. It's that the ability to see the top cards allows you to sculpt your plays appropriately. Yeah. Which is on one of the best advantages. All right, three mana. I think we're gonna see. Uh, yep, a daybreak ranger. And a, and a Galvanic Blast for the Insectile Aberration. Very strong here. Uh, Brandon in a, in a pretty big hole. I was surprised to see him use the Galvanic Blast right away because can't you just... I, I understand if uh, 
you know, if Craftic has like Vibra Snag, let's say for example, Me, there's an argument right. for, well, I just need to, I need to kill this thing. I can't afford to wait another turn or two. But Daybreak could have done it for free. Right. It seems like a little bit of a rush there. I would probably agree. Uh, that said, uh, in his defense, not many great plays for Galvanic Blast. Uh, oh, De yeah, Flip yeah, Delver is sure. like obviously the ideal target, but I, I still think I agree. So guys to St. Trap out of Brandon. Um, Brandon has a pretty good threat on the board, but he's, he's just got to be sure, you know, that like he could pass here and make a blocker and feel good about it, but then he's, oh, you know, then he watches out for Vapor Snag. Yeah. So um, Matt's hand, I believe, is Elish Norn, Oblivion Ring, and the Blade Splicer he just played. And he's in attack. He was totally willing to do this trade. Yep. I find okay. it fascinating that he makes... I probably don't make the attack. I would uh, make the attack before yeah, sure. playing yeah, Blade yeah, Splicer. Yeah, yeah. I think Brandon might not have blocked had he done that. But uh, All right. Phantasmal Image, the Blade Splicer. Uh, Brandon playing no images in the main, just two out of the board. Yeah, pretty awesome to get to free roll all of your opponent's awesome stuff. Right. Uh, Daybreak, I still don't really like... I don't know if I like the Daybreak Ranger attack there. Day, I know it wasn't good on the current board, but it's still quite a threat. And, you know, now that we see a Phantasmal image, for example. <laughs> Matt Young, at least with one Strangle Root Geist in his hand. Yeah, I believe he's sitting on Oblivion Ring and Elishnorn from the previous turn. Elishnorn, not exactly the card you want to draw here, but... No. Although who knows if he can if he can get the board gummed up enough, the game can go pretty late. The interesting thing I would think about the uh, the play. Let's go back to the play where he does where he trades off the guys to Saint Trap. Remember he has a revoke existence in play, and that that three three is an artifact. Yep. Interesting decision by Brandon not to you know revoke the token, swing back with Geist. It would have offered the trade of Geist for. I suppose he doesn't really want to trade Geist for Blades Blade Splicer, Avis and Pilgrim. So. Uh, Oblivion Ring, going to go with the 3-3, three, three, if it resolves. Probably the sort of thing that I think Brandon just lets resolve. Yep. Um, next turn, he has a way to do Probably going to just block Evanson's program here. This is a pretty good spot yeah. for... Um, if Brandon doesn't have Dungeon Geist, so there's not much of a reason to block Blade Splicer, first strike is not very yeah, relevant. He's yeah, trade it up. So that was a pretty awesome Phantasmal image for Craftic there. Yeah, and that, now what he's going to do is he's going to get to revoke the 3-3, three, three, sit back on Mana Leak, and... Just slowly build up. Yeah. You Snapcaster know. to Ponder, and do... Well, you know. well, Matt has Elish Norn in his hand, you know. Right. So, uh, instead he's going to Snapcaster the Ponder. Sure. That's fine, too. I think he's, he sounds like... looks like he's content to maybe take another hit off the Golem before he decides yep. to revoke. Yeah, his light total is not really under that much pressure in this matchup. Like Matt's going to go way over the top of whatever, or he's going to, uh, or he's going to lose. It's not like you're going to get nickel and dimed out of these games. Right, and uh, Brandon, only string root guys can really engineer that kind of that kind game. of game. Right. Uh, speaking of string strangle root geist, yeah, uh, yeah, that that'll that'll get a mana leak for for the for the reasons just mentioned. Um, remember, Brandon does still have a uh, snapcaster mage in his hand, so yeah, all he's got spells. a lot of action left over. I assume we're going to see Revoke this turn. He's just drawn a green-black sword, which he can't connect with just yet. So, and then, you know, doing doing the blue deck thing now, just uh, no plays. Yep. Not really much to fear. Um, still not revoking the 3-3 three, three Golem. At, at some point, I think Brandon's going to have to do that, right? Yep. I mean, maybe he can afford one more hit here, but, yeah, I agree with you that. The question is, you know, I, I guess what I would ask is, is, is why. Um, you know, you don't want to get running Birthing Podded or something like that? I. Uh, yeah, he does still have, because he still has the Snapcaster range. I suppose the right. Birthing Pod can come down... If he has four mana, Birthing Pod can come down, sack the Blade Splicer, get a Hunt Master before right. Brandon can do anything about it. There's also just, like, it's sort of hard to... No, it's hard to visualize how Brandon actually loses the game playing this way. Like, he's covered against almost all, like, the disaster scenarios. Yeah. So well, I think... Actually, yeah. So he's going to play Sword yeah, of Feast so and Famine. So this is pretty sweet. This is excellent. 
Now, Bra- <laughs> Brandon, never to tap out again. <laughs> we'll swing in with the Feast Famine. There's there goes Alex Norn. Okay, sure. That wasn't getting cast anyway. Not a big penalty. But uh, a hit there for four. Actually, puts it, even, maybe even puts the race in Brandon's favor. And now we're going to revoke the token, I think. Right. Card that Matt knew he had all along. And Matt thinking here. Gotta say go. Not a good sign. Nope. Uh, definitely Brandon. That's another leak. <laughs> Don't really see how Matt gets back into this game. And now, just in case you were thinking you could run chump blocks, uh, you won't be invisible stalkers on the yep. battlefield. Um, Delver, so good when it's ahead. Uh, and, and we see that here. Yeah, that's, that's a wrap. So, we have Tom Ma winning. Yeah. We have Craig Wesco winning. Are we actually at Two lethal, or do we up. have another turn here? Um, looks like we... Uh, one more turn. Yeah, one more turn. Counting it, Matt Young going down to one. And I think there's another mana leak still chilling out there. Or? Still another one in his hand, yes. Can't think of anything Matt Young can draw to save snag. himself here. Well, you're at one and your opponent has an invisible stalker. Yes, yeah, time, like time <laughs> spiral. All right, All right <laughs> there's, there's the match. So Brandon Kreptic winning, blue white Delver, going to move on. And, uh, you know, Tom Ma's plan still <laughs> still, uh, still in check as Brandon Kreptic will play Thomas Ma in the, fi in the semifinals. <laughs> 